I got these friends, Dot and Earl, that live at Happy Valley Trailer Court, and I just love them. Nice, 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 yes, nice, 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 yes, yes, wonderful. Yeah, 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 nice, yes! It's quite natural for this beautiful woman to be posing for a magazine cover. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Wonderful! As a high-priced fashion model, she's graced nearly 100 covers. Looking good, looking good, looking good. You like your work, don't you, Andy? Yes, wonderful! But Andy McDowell has a right to be happy because this photo shoot is for a magazine called Premiere, a movie magazine. And this supermodel turned big time actress is finally sitting pretty. There's only like certain actresses that are in demand and they have priority over the good script. But the nice thing is, it's now I have priority over the good script. Yeah, yeah, then come on, the bad guy again. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. The bad guy here is France's biggest oh, film star, Gérard Depardieu. Okay, and he's co-star in Disney's latest release, Green Card. She's also recently finished movies with John Malkovich and Bruce Willis, going from brains to brawn without skipping a beat. Not bad for a dumb model. When it feels good, you want it to last. People get ideas about what, you know, who you are and stuff, and I think modeling hurt me a lot. It's just the way our society is. And one of the negative things that people always like to say is that models are stupid and all models want to act. I got these friends, Dot and Earl, that live at Happy Valley Trailer Court, and I just love them. In 1984, Andy was a model who desperately wanted to be an actress. She thought she got her big break in a movie called Greystroke, The Legend of Tarzan, playing Jane to Christopher Lambert's Ape Man. But for Andy McDowell, it was not a pretty picture. Woo, woo, woo. Take me back to the first role you ever got. I know you don't like to talk about it, but I'm going to ask you about it anyway. All right. <laughs> if All you right. have to, who doesn't? Everybody does. Anyway, I mostly volunteer it nowadays. Okay, go ahead and volunteer it. What was I going to ask you? Um, you're going to ask me about Grace Stoke. That's my huge hurdle in my life. What's it's your right. huge hurdle? Well, I was dubbed. I mean, not only am I a model, I'm a model that got dubbed in her first film. I mean, what a dilemma. I mean, I mean, you might as well have just, like, crucified me, you know, and just, like, forgot about it. What got her so upset was that they replaced her lovely South Carolinian drawl with the mellifluous and unaccented voice of Glenn Close. So if you caught this clunker, you saw Andy but you heard Glenn. He must be allowed to decide for himself. I want him to stay, but I also want him to be happy, as happy as he can be. And we want for him only what he wants for himself. I told a good friend of mine, I said it was like, so I dug a grave for me, put me in it, and buried it. Couldn't have done anything more disastrous to somebody. Could not have. Did you feel devastated? Oh, crushed, completely. And I knew, I knew right then, I knew everything that was in, ahead of me. I knew what everybody was going to say, what everybody was going to think. I knew everything that I was going to have to go through. But for a small part in St. Elmo's Fire as an object of love for a brainless brat packer and a stint in an Italian miniseries she hopes will never cross the Atlantic, Andy McDowell was nowhere to be seen. Stop moping and lash out. Except on every L'Oreal magazine ad and television commercial. They've been paying her $500,000 for 12 days work a year. It's L'Oreal, and I'm worth it. She also played the white trash tart in the Calvin Klein jean ads. The only thing this out-of-work actress waited on was her next paycheck. Someday, we're gonna see Atlanta. Why do you think all of a sudden, you're acting so much, and for so long, there weren't any jobs. Well, I think that sex life kind of changed everything for me. It was like the best thing that ever happened for my career. Sex? What about sex? Everything. 
about sex lives and videotape was good for Andy McDowell, a taut erotic psychodrama depicting 30-something sexuality in a small southern town. It was the surprise hit of 1989. Andy's effortless performance as a repressed housewife surrounded by infidelity was a critical and popular triumph. Anyway, being happy isn't all that great. I mean, the last time I was really happy, I got so fat. When you went in to audition for Sex, Lives, and Videotape, the director um, is quoted as saying that he really wasn't interested no. in you. The casting director even left the room the first time I did my audition. <clears throat> because she wasn't interested in you. I don't know. I mean, you might be led to think this. Were you led to think that? I didn't worry about it. I, I was very, very secure with that role. I knew that I knew that woman better than anybody could know that woman. Where do you get the self-confidence? Hell if I know. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I tell you, for that role, though, that role was very, very special. And I don't know if I'll ever experience something that felt quite like that before. I mean, again, it was just, I felt like I could really create a person so real. It was an amazing experience for me as an actress. I want out of this marriage. I want out of this marriage. Did the director tell you after you got the job what he thought about you before you got the job? No, I read that. Did he think, oh, this is just a model and she can't act? I think a lot of people thought that, yeah. Everybody thought that. Except you. Except for me. People changed their minds very quickly once the film was released. She posted a very close second to none other than Meryl Streep in the Best Actress category at the Cannes Film Festival. And she won first prize in the L.A. Drama Critics Awards. Pretty heady stuff for just another pretty face. Here's Andy, enjoying a quiet moment with Bruce When she's not shooting with Bruce or schmoozing with studio heads, Andy spends her time with her two-year-old daughter, Rainey, and her four-year-old son, Justin. She married her husband, Paul, who's also a model, five years ago. As Andy explains, it was a short courtship. How did you meet your husband? I actually worked with him. I worked with him and, and looked at him and lusted after him, and that was that. <laughs> it was over just like that? Yeah, just like that. We worked, we worked very fast. Yeah, how long before, from when you met him? We got, got married three months later. Oh. <laughs> That's very fast. Yeah. That's my wife you've been grabbing. Now get up. Just like her career, we're talking major acceleration. 1991 will see Andy starring in three big film releases. Green Card, hey, Hudson Hawk, and Object of Beauty. As a model, the camera has always loved her. Now the rest of the world will get their chance. Oh, you're so good! <laughs> yeah, you are fantastic!